Again, I appreciate everybody's patience here. It's good to see so many of you. Uh, excited, hopefully just as excited as we are about uh, the upcoming IUG in-person conference in Detroit. Uh, we've tagged it as Together We Drive Innovation. And we thought that tagline worked nicely in several different ways. Uh, just a reminder we'll, that the conference itself is March 25th through the 27th. That's the main conference dates. And then there will be a pre-conference uh, the day before that. And we'll talk specifically about uh, some of those elements within the conference schedule um, as we go along here. I wanted to introduce my other uh, folks here that will be helping uh, introduce the conference to you. So uh, I thought maybe... Uh, Tom and Jeff, you could introduce yourselves, say, you know, the organizations you're with, and then maybe a conference memory that you that you have from a previous conference that you attended, any conference, anything memorable. Uh, Tom, would you want to say hello? And uh, I'll go first. Yeah, hey, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is Tom Jacobson with uh, Clarivit, and. Uh, um, I uh, am currently the executive library advocate and uh, uh, strategist with Clarivit and, and have been with Innovative for many, many years. Uh, one of my favorite memories is IUG number one, and we had never done it before in figuring it out and uh, helping Jerry Klein prepare. He was quite nervous to give a keynote address to all of his customers from the stage and uh, worked quite quite late that first year. And we were not allowed to stay at the hotel. So at 1 a.m. I had to drive home and be back at 7 a.m. But uh, it was a great time. Good memories. <laughs> it is. Thanks for sharing that, Tom. Thanks for being here. Jeff, how about you uh, introduce yourself and conference uh, memory that you might have? Sure. My name is Jeff Campbell. I am uh, the head of infrastructure management services at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, Sierra falls underneath uh, my umbrella of duties, and I uh, have been involved in administering uh, IIII slash Clarivate product of some sort of or the other since 2000. So it's my 24th year I'm involved with Inipac, Millennium, Sierra. Um, my uh, a memory from a conference. I think what stands out was last year um, is our first conference back. Um, so after, you know, after COVID uh, was uh, an excellent memory, memory, just getting together, meeting new people, just uh, recapturing the feeling of being in person and um, the benefits of, of just being with colleagues from around the country and the world. Uh, and I am Wes Osborne. I'm the IUG uh, chairperson, and I come from a public library consortium in central Ohio. One of the conference memories that I have is one that was um, in a place, and it was, they were using those boom arm cameras for part of the video thing, and I just thought to myself, what kind of a world am I living in? <laughs> it was just mind blowing to me that, um, and, and kind of inspirational to me, uh, and that you know, we were here making enough of a difference that there would be that sort of in environment that would be happening in that scenario. So it was kind of fascinating and a whole new world to me. And I know we've got several first time conference people. I don't think we're going to have any boom cameras necessarily, but if you've not been to a conference before, uh, it'll hopefully be just as an exciting of an experience for you. And we'll hopefully be able to, so it was kind of fascinating and a whole new world to me. And I know we've got several first time conference people. I don't think we're going to have any boom cameras necessarily, but if you've not been to a conference before, uh, it'll hopefully be just as an exciting of an experience for you. And we'll hopefully be able to help you get prepared for that some today. So just so that you will know, the slide deck that we're going through today will be available after the webinar, and we will post that and any other questions that we answer during this to our conference website, which if you go to innovativeusers.org, you can find available right there, a link uh, on the homepage banner to do that. In terms of basic information, you don't want anybody to be confused about Dates and times and all those, uh, very important. Uh, the conference itself is Monday, March 25th through the 27th. I have noted here that the conference will run daily all day from approximately 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We did have last year a scenario where 
because we were meeting on a Saturday, it just kind of uh, felt best to not have that last day be a full day um, session. But this year we are planning full day sessions Monday through Wednesday. The pre-conference sessions are full day sessions on the Sunday prior. Uh, we'll actually look at the uh, specifics about the pre-conference sessions in a bit. There is a free uh, hackathon and uh, Tom will be able to talk with you a little bit more about that later. And then the other sessions are paid options, but they are a bargain for um, what, what the cost is on those. So um, again, Tom will be able to share some with you, more with you about those, but I would say great, great training opportunity. Um, the registration is open. If you haven't already registered for the conference, you can save your, you or your organization $100 if you register by our early bird date. New this year, and we've seen several of you taking advantage of this, and that is great, is a discount if you are bringing a group to the conference. So if you are bringing five or more people, you'll be able to use the discount code group and get $50 off per person registration. So a great, a great bargain. And then we do have some notes about the cancellation on the website itself. One of the things that I also wanna make sure that you're all aware of is that you should book your hotel separately. Um, there are some org conferences where they kind of book the hotel and the conference at the same time. In our case, you need to book that as a separate item. You'll wanna book by the 29th because that's how long our block is available with the hotel. And later that week, there is an NCAA tournament game. And so some folks might be starting to arrive um, early for that. And we wanna make sure that you're able to get the best conference experience, which is at the conference hotel. And to be frank with you, just from a financial standpoint, it also helps us meet our financial commitments that we have with the hotel if you use that link to book, book with the hotel. So definitely encourage you to do that. And even if you're a little bit on the fence about the conference and not sure how that's all going to work out, you might still book the hotel room. You can cancel that or modify it later if you don't have all of your transportation stuff figured out. They've got good policies on all that. Another note that I wanted to mention here is that in our experience at the hotel, the, the steering committee visited it as a site visit. We did observe that the check-in lines for the hotel can be quite long. So what you may want to do as a, as a tip for you is consider going and downloading the Marriott app, and then you'll be able to use their mobile check-in option through there. So that might save you some time when you arrive at the hotel itself. So consider that as a, as a tip. Um, and, and that's the sort of thing we want to share with you today. Another thing to be aware of is parking. If you are um, driving to the conference, uh, it is located within a good drive's distance uh, for many uh, members that might be interested in attending. There are several parking garages. Uh, the one that's kind of most natural free to use is the one that SP plus parking that is on the west side, I guess of the building it would be the southwest side that'll have the most direct entrance right into the hotel space for you it is slightly more expensive uh, on the other side of the building the, the renaissance uh, area the gm renaissance center there is uh, two other parking garages that are a little bit cheaper um, so those are options for you one of the things that i put on this note here because i made this mistake if you follow your driving directions it tells you to turn right and if you're anything like me, I was all kind of freaked out about where I was at and if I was going to turn on the proper place. And I ended up going down this little dead end alley here. Um, you want to turn on Bates if you, to get into the uh, to get into the conference facility if you're driving. So again, this this will be in the slide deck that'll be available for you if you need to take a closer look at all that. Traveling from the airport. Uh, we did look and ask about some different options about shuttles and vans and all those, but really when we looked at the pricing for those, it doesn't, it wouldn't be any better pricing than what it would cost you to get a, either a taxi or a Lyft or an Uber from the airport. It's about 50 bucks. Um, if, you know, and those, if you see multiple people kind of standing around in those areas that look like they could be library people, you know, we, we can kind of spot each other sometimes. You might ask them, oh, are you heading to the conference hotel? And maybe you can uh, share a ride there and, and make that um, cost price a little bit less. But the, those are your best options. And again, we did check into some others and 
that just uh, weren't really going to be any better cost and would be less convenient for you. One of the super cool things once you get into the conference site is um, the Detroit People Mover is connected to the Renaissance Center and goes kind of in a loop around several areas with uh, in the Detroit area. Um, and Jeff, do you want to talk about, we used the People Mover. We went to a, a cool spot for dinner the, the one evening. Do you want to share with that with folks? Yeah, so, um, it, you know, it's a nice little uh, way to travel around um, that little downtown section to get to restaurants and other uh, other venues. Um, that it's free makes it even better. I think they're doing a, a pilot program this year, and so we'll be able to take advantage of that. Um, I, I don't, uh, other than writing it a few different times, we were in there, I think 2016, last conference there. I took it around to, to a baseball game and nice safe way to get around and probably a little warm, um, a little more warm than walking uh, come yeah. March. But And we took it to the Greek town, which has some great restaurant right. options and bakeries and things like that. So the story of bakery uh, and Pegasus, uh, the tavern we ate at, um, I mentioned those at the for lunch options, really great places. Uh, Pegasus particularly was a really good place to go and eat. So for lunch and dinner, that would be really good. Yeah. People mover is not a bus. It's kind of like a tram. Um, so it kind of is above the ground and goes over uh, the streets and there are entrances and exits um, in different locations. There is a map. So you need, you know, if you find out where you want to go, uh, you'll need to make sure you get off at the right exit. So, yep. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Very excited about that. Now, the conference site itself, I've mentioned it a few times, uh, the GM Renaissance Center, or sometimes you'll see it uh, listed as the Rensen. Um, I, I picked up that lingo uh, from, from Derry, kind of a, one of our resident experts of the area. One of the funny things when we did our site visit is when we were looking at the map of the facility, we looked at this map, Jeff, and I think you and I both immediately thought of something that was else that was kind of similarly shaped to this, right? <laughs> Yep. Um, for, for all the Star Trek, that's right. For all of our Star Trek nerds out there, uh, you definitely a very interesting uh, facility. One of the things that I will make you aware of is that it is a very cool. This is a photo that I took at, so it's a very interesting architectural uh, site. But it can be very confusing to kind of move around and get around in. So. Be aware of that. Give yourself maybe some extra time to explore. We're going to have a lot of signs that will be up in the area to help with navigational aids and directions. But the other thing that we found out when we were there is that you know, there are people that work there regularly. And the, um, the folks that were in Detroit were very, very friendly. So, you know, once a time when we were looking for the people mover in the Renaissance Center, we were kind of doing that going in circles and I stopped and asked somebody for help and they were very gracious in kind of getting us uh, in, pointed in the right direction. So we'll have lots of signs, but give yourself lots of time and also uh, do ask for help because the folks there are, are very friendly. So I wanted to go over a few um, basics with the schedule so you have a sense of what's happening each day. Um, and Tom, I think this is where I'll turn it over to you to let you uh, talk to folks through that kind of day zero experience or the pre-conference experience. Yeah, great. Thank you, Wes. Yeah, day zero, the, the day before the conference starts, the pre-conference day, uh, Innovative is offering four separate activities. Uh, we're bringing back the IUG Hackathon. Uh, the last time we had it was when we were in Phoenix pre-COVID, um, and it is free. Show up. We will have a challenge that you will use the APIs of either Sierra or Polaris to create something or solve a problem. Uh, we're still working out a few of the details. I believe it's gonna be somewhat open-ended. We're not going to give you the problem to solve. We're gonna let you come in and say, here's a problem I want to solve. Uh, there are going to be exciting prizes like Prizes worth winning, not a, not a Starbucks coffee card for $20, but a, a prizes worth winning. So something to think about. 
I, we will also have experts at hand, uh, some of our engineering team who can help uh, explain and walk you through some of the different APIs. Um, and uh, the thing to keep in mind is you will be working off of your system. So make sure when you show up, you have the credentials and you know how to access your systems APIs from uh, the conference. And that's going to, it's an all day activity. We will have experts available and so on. You will show off your creations the next day at a hackathon happy hour where you'll present and winners will be selected. So uh, great fun. Uh, come do it uh, individually. Come as a team. You decide if you really want to participate and you don't have a team and you'd like to be part of a team. Uh, let us know. We can try to put together teams and see if we can find a place for you because we want as many people as possible to participate. Separate from that, we're having three um, somewhat traditional pre-conferences. Uh, they do have an additional charge. The first one, one I really want to call out, marketing best practices. We are bringing in Cordelia Anderson, who's a nationally known library marketing expert. Uh, to to lead a day of marketing, um, not just best practices within libraries, but then we will have innovative staff there who will take her best practices and apply them to the exciting new Vega LX products and show how to take what she talks about and apply it in real life. We know that your marketing staff are not always the ones who think of attending IUG. We hope this will change their mind. Please share this with them. Please encourage them that, that more and more of the stuff we're doing, especially around Vega LX, uh, has a marketing focus and is does present some great marketing tools. So we would like to encourage you to start inviting your marketing team to attend. And Cordelia Anderson, again, a great uh, nationally known library marketing expert. She's been on many of our uh, webinars and other people use her as well. So great. We also have a traditional Polaris and Sierra pre-conference. Both of these are sort of focused to, I've had the system for a while and I want a review, right? A day of review, updates, tuning, what are things I should be remembering that I might not have fully paid attention to during uh, my training or my training was 20 years ago and I'd like a refresher. So how to, how to tune your systems and how to sort of refresh your use of them. Great, uh, thanks for sharing those. Uh, yes, and it should be very, uh... Again, I would say for those paid ones, I think the price is $100. That is a fantastic deal. Um, very, very, very highly encourage you to, to look into that. If you've already registered and you need to add those on, use our contact form um, within the uh, within the IG Innovative Users Group website. And our business manager, Kathy, can help you add in those if you need to be. We did ask somebody about observing the hackathon. I would just encourage anybody to come because you, those groups usually need a variety of people that are both technical developers and non-technical people to help understand how the solutions it might impact users. So I would say come and you might find yourself getting excited about being a part of solving a problem and a solution, even if you're not a developer. Is that what you would think, Tom? I would agree. I would agree. And my experience is, you know, the developers often understand the API beautifully, but doesn't necessarily understand the business logic or the use case. So if you bring, like, I know how Polaris works. I'm just trying, how do I extend it outward in this one case? You bring a key part of the puzzle to the discussion. Um, so again, if you reach out in advance, we can try to arrange something, but I think that's a great idea. If you show up in the room, we will look to find you a team to be part of. Yeah. 
Um, the, uh, the opening keynote, uh, innovative roadmaps, kind of this day one experience really focused on those things that we know everybody who's going to come to the conference is going to want to understand. Um, and do you want to talk about those briefly? And then we can talk um, a moment about the keynote speaker, uh, Tom, and the, the approach we took there. That sounds great. Yeah, we're going to follow the same day one approach. We've used the last several IUGs. You know, we go back and forth, we get input from everybody who attends and we think about it. You know, the approach is to create a day of a non-interrupted sort of presentation. As Wes just said, it's the stuff everybody wants to hear, uh, as opposed to, hey, during this next session, there's, there's three different meetings I'd like to be at and I have to choose one. We take the, the key stuff. Uh, uh, IUG conducts some, some business, the wonderful awards to the attendees are given out. Uh, Innovative presents as your, as your critical partner, right? We present the status of the company and the business. We present roadmaps uh, to the key products. And uh, we will again be doing sort of a user spotlight. This year, we will be focusing on uh, changes and new things in the IUG innovative shared development process. So we, we like to get these important things in on the first day because they often help you when you do start attending the other breakout sessions. Like, oh, I remember they made a big announcement and now at this breakout session, I'm going to get all the download details on it. So, so same sort of exciting day. We will cap it off with the uh, hackathon happy hour. So end to end fun. Yeah, great. And another part of that, and I think that as I've thought about keynote speakers, one of the things that I think about trying to accomplish with a keynote speaker at an event is to kind of unsettle you from your normal day-to-day -day routines, right? We, we don't want this to be another day at the office. We want it to be something different. Um, and there's a variety of different approaches for that, but um, Innovative uh, actually sponsors and pays for the keynote, but they're very gracious in interacting with the IUG steering committee and saying, what type of person do you think you might want this year? And I think uh, we talked about several different things, but at one point somebody said, you know, I could just really use a good laugh. <laughs> and so, you know, there the, we looked and, and kind of mentioned that. And again, Innovative was gracious enough to say, yeah, we, we can consider something like that. And so uh, this individual, Greg Schwimm, is uh, somebody who kind of bridges these worlds of inspirational, motivational, but is it wants to make it fun and funny as well. Um, Tom, yeah. any other thoughts there? I'm looking forward to it too. You know, we, we sometimes working with you, we do the thought provoking, which sometimes is a little bit too provoking. Other times we want to bring in the light touch. I think it's a good year to bring in Greg, your boss's favorite comedian. And yeah, bridge that inspirational and that, you know, you just have to laugh sometimes. So looking forward to it. Yeah, great. Thanks for uh, sharing all those things, uh, Tom. Appreciate that. And we'll jump in and talk about what's then happening on the second and third uh, day. Um, those are full of breakout sessions. On the second day, the Tuesday, it will have your uh, all-conference included lunch. Um, on that day one, the lunch would be on your own. Uh, and Jeff will be able to talk with you about some good options for lunch on your own here a little bit later. And then on the third day or the Wednesday, uh, more breakout sessions. You have an option if you want to attend the public library lunch um, or lunch on your own on that uh, third day. And then that third day, the other thing that we're switching is we're going to really have a lot of our forums on that third day. We know those are very popular, those kind of open sessions where people can just bring in and talk what, about whatever they want. We're moving those to the third day kind of for some of those reasons that Tom mentioned. You get all this information in the first day and the second day, and then the third day, maybe you just want to decompress or try to understand a little bit more about what was talked or how you might implement something, or you've had a, a problem that you had hoped maybe could get talked about earlier in the session in one of the other sessions and hasn't yet. And so you really want to come back to your organization 
with the answer for this uh, thing. Well, the forums are great uh, opportunities for that. So we're going to really put a lot of those on that last day. Um, and it also hopefully is a little more interactive, makes it easier to participate in those and stay connected versus you know, being in a more traditional presentation where on that third day, you might be starting to lose some steam for that sort of thing. This will be an opportunity to, to be interact and be engaged uh, through that process. Wes, uh, if we go back one slide, there yeah. was, when I reviewed the slides this morning, I realized I forgot something. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. On day two, Innovative is sponsoring an academic library breakfast. Huh. Yes. So not as many of our academic colleagues attend anymore. We encourage them to please attend. The breakfast will focus on sort of the vision and future with the academic libraries and, and give them sort of that big overarching sort of look at things. Of course, the various breakout sessions will address both public and academic libraries as they go along. But just as you have a public library lunch, we wanted to give the academic libraries their special place, and that's going to be a breakfast on day two. Yes, thanks for mentioning that. We'll, that will be available on your schedules as well. You'll be able to see that and, and find out the details that you need about that. Um, uh, but yes, good, good, uh, good plug in there. One of the things that we quickly realized as you start putting together these schedules is, oh, we'd love an opportunity to do this. We'd love an opportunity to do that. And you're like, uh oh, <laughs> you run out of time real fast when you're yes. when you're programming these things. So it's a nice option to have that in a in a slot where uh, you know, we wouldn't have any other conflicts for those folks that would be interested in learning more about that. Um, another thing. Uh, uh, Tom, that Innovative is going to be sponsoring and, and bringing these community uh, building events. Uh, yeah. So you want to chat about this? Yeah, this is something that we really want to focus on. Um, and not just this year, we want to kind of work on sort of reigniting some of these traditions, right? There used to be an IUG orchestra and they would play between sessions and it was awesome. Uh, so we are working hard. I want, I had this slide different, and then my person came back to me and said, well, wait, they just hedged a little. We believe we are this close to signing um, an instructor to have on-site early morning yoga on days two and three. So, so bring your Lululemon. Uh, we'll supply the yoga mats and, and come to so, get some early morning zen. We are also looking at some other sort of smaller community-based activities that'll happen throughout the conference during the breaks. Just something that uh, brings us closer together without necessarily being about automating libraries. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And uh, for those who attend, be on the lookout. There'll be more coming. I'm already seeing some positive comments there, Tom, and thanks for that and folks that are uh, looking forward to participating in that. So uh, thanks Innovative for, for sponsoring that. Um, Jeff, do you wanna have a few notes here to any of our presenters that might be on the session? Uh, we, we don't wanna miss an opportunity to uh, acknowledge and thank them and then give them a couple little instructions as well. Nope, we don't have you off mute there, Jeff. Yep. So making sure I'm unmuted. So yeah, we uh, Wes posted a template um, for the slide deck on the um, forum and I'm gonna send out that template to everyone uh, as a reminder to use that. Uh, in the past, we've asked that um, the, the first few slides follow the template and then you're able to go ahead and um, kind of uh, you know, make the remainder of them your own. Um, we, I haven't decided a date yet for the slide submissions, but we also will ask for those ahead of time if you can do that. Um, if you're like me, uh, you're working on those slides right up until the day before the conference. And so there may not be an opportunity for you to get them to us, but I will submit a date that we'd hope to get the slides by. And that just gives us a chance to go ahead and get them, uh, make them available for people um, to review ahead of time or to have um, after they attend um, as well. So uh, that will be yeah. coming. Great. I had a question about poster sessions. We did uh, 
ask uh, for those in the past couple of years, and we've not we've not had uh, submissions for those, so there won't be any um, poster sessions uh, this year. Um, if folks are interested in that, uh, we, yeah, it's one of those things where we just need um, kind of uh, the user the user group itself to really want to participate in that particular format. So no poster sessions this year, but that doesn't mean that there will never be any poster sessions. Um, they just taught this year. I'm, I'm not sure the donkey will be back this year, but the, we are looking at possibly bringing back the dance floor. Ah, there you go. Fun, fun. Some, somebody yes. put a picture of the donkey in the chat. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Always something fun for that um, reception. In terms of getting ready, again, well, I noticed and observed that there was maybe about 20% of the, the folks uh, that had mentioned this, this was their first time attending the conference. What a privilege uh, for, the, for the Innovative Users Group to be a part of that experience for you. It is a real privilege. And so I didn't want to be remiss and not take an opportunity for anybody who might, this might be their first traveling period uh, for work-related purposes and just cover a few basics um, with you when it comes to traveling for conferences. Packing tips, um, it, always consider that you want to dress warm. It will probably be cooler already in Detroit in, in March, but even if it happens to be a, a warmer day, uh, you should still consider dressing warm because in most buildings, the way they have to do the management of the air conditioning and things is they have to pre-cool most rooms so that when people arrive in those rooms, uh, then they won't get excessively hot. So make sure that you consider that, particularly if you tend to run cold, uh, be able to uh, dress warm. This is a big facility, just the Rensen itself is a big facility. The conference spaces will be somewhat contained into a couple of floors, so it won't be too difficult to get around there, but always a good idea to wear a comfortable uh, pair of shoes as part of the process, and then making certain that you bring any medication that you might need to take as part of that, or if you kind of are prone to more uh, having an upset stomach or something, there, there is facilities for getting that nearby, but when you're not feeling well, it's always better to kind of have some of those things right with you. This is, uh, I like to highlight this tip from my uh, grandmother, um, wonderful um, Eileen Osborne. She, some advice she gave to me when I started to travel in my younger years was she said, Wes, you should really consider packing half as many clothes but take twice as much money. And let's be realistic here. <laughs> You're probably not going to need the eight outfits that, that you might be thinking that you need, but you might need a little extra um, cash on hand. So con consider uh, that tip for my, for my wonderful grandmother. Um, and it's just a privilege for me to be able to think about her in that way and pa pass along that advice to you all. Another thing I want you to all be aware of is that we do have a brand new conference app. So we have a, we used an app last year. This year, we, we took some of your feedback. We looked at ways that we could make improvements. We looked at what was available in the marketplace that was kind of in our price point. And we do have a brand new conference app and website that you'll be able to use for kind of scheduling information and for chatting between folks. So you can right now, if you want, go to iug2024.skedge.com. Skedge is um, a tool that's used by some of the other uh, conferences uh, that are in our community. So if you've used Skedge before, um, you, can, uh, you may be familiar with it. Um, but that's both a website and an app that you can download. If you want, you can set up your account now on there. We will be sending an email to everybody as we get uh, further along so that you can um, so that you can make sure to be registered. You don't have to be registered to just look at the website, but it will allow you to do things like build out your schedule and do the in-app chatting with the other attendees and things like that. They've, uh, folks asked about. It also does have the floor maps in there so that you can see the floors that we'll be utilizing in the facility so you'll have that information as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there was, Jeff, am I forgetting any other key elements there on the, yeah, oh, it's in progress. That's maybe the right. thing I'm forgetting. <laughs> if you take a look, you'll see, and we asked our conference player to help us get the day one pieces there so you could just Kind of get a sense of what it might look like and then uh, jeff and i are going through and plugging in all of the 
activities and things that will be happening on the second and third day. We expect to have most of that done in the next two weeks. So within the next two weeks, uh, you should be able to go on there and get a much fuller representation. We do have a list of the programs themselves available on the main website from innovativeusers.org. So you can get a list of what all the program titles are, but they will be appearing over here with their full descriptions and, and the presenters' names and all those sorts of things within the next couple of weeks. So uh, keep an eye on there, but you can also go there today if you wanna get started and download things and get your account set up and all those pieces. Um, another piece that is important Important and that you will see soon is our list of exhibitors. We do have some great exhibitors and some exhibitors that have not been at the IOG conference in the past that we're looking forward to you being able to interact and work with and experience. So we'll be getting that list out within that next within the next two weeks. Take a look at that list and if something looks interesting to you, make sure to book some time with that uh, exhibitor. Um, and that includes as well, well, I'll pause on that. Uh, innovative will, will be there in force and we'll talk a little bit about more about Innovative's presence, but take a look at that. Think about booking meetings with exhibitors um, and make sure that if you do that, you, you adjust your time zone accordingly for any of those. So this a conference will be in the Eastern time zone. If you book a meeting with a exhibitor or with Innovative and you put it in your calendar as 11 a.m. and you're in Pacific time, your calendar helpfully will probably try to adjust it for you and then it will get confusing. Tom, have you had that experience before yourself? Uh, it, booking in advance for a different time zone is confusing when you look at it in advance, but when you arrive at the conference, you very much appreciate it. Um, yes. And I know the innovative team is very good at using the time zone feature when scheduling meetings, say through teams and stuff yeah. that they yeah. automatically make sure it, it knows it's not 11 a.m., but it's 11 a.m. Eastern. Yep. Right. Yeah. And speaking of that, innovative, well, we got the list of uh, folks from innovative that will be attending late last week, or early this week. An incredible, again, opportunity to interact with people from support product owners, sales engineers, C-level executives, which I think sometimes people can kind of feel a little uncomfortable about. But let me tell you, if you've got a something that's been bothering you and you catch one of these uh, executives and you get a bug in their ear about it, that's a pretty effective way to get, <laughs> to get things done. Um, so do not overlook uh, those opportunities. Um, Tom, you want to talk any more about some of the team members that will be there from Innovative? Well, all the all the major departments, right? If you've got a problem with our marketing, they'll be there in force. If you want to meet the head of engineering or the head of product management, or you want to talk with Yareev Kirsch, the general manager, we're all going to be there. We're working on sending out an email in advance that has a link that says, hey, schedule a meeting it, it, Schedule a meeting before you get on the airplane, right? If you know you want to meet with the help desk, schedule a meeting, and you'll be able to tell us why or what it's about. The more advanced notice we have, the more you tell us, the better prepared we are when we show up. If you want to sit down, there's a ticket in your help desk queue that has been vexing you for a while. You can show up on the spot and ask us about it. But if you tell us in advance, we're going to be much more prepared. So look out for that email. I think it might actually be a multi-purpose email with a, sort of a similar book of meeting if, at PLA if you want. So book in advance. And that guarantees the time you want. Uh, and it guarantees we can be prepared with the topic you want. Yeah. And just on that, uh, one of my colleagues who attended the conference last year met with a support person and resolved an issue that we had been having for four years. So that's just to give you a sense of how effective that can be. It wasn't a like major, you know, stop the presses sort of issue, or we would have in, in, interacted or engaged, but it was this annoying issue that involved multiple platforms and parts. And when we, when she sat down, my colleague did with somebody and kind of talked about everything that was involved, we were able to come up with the solution and a workflow um, to, to address that. So very powerful opportunity. 
It, it really is. You know, we used to do a lot of support via the telephone. You called the help desk and you had an interactive conversation. Frustratingly, in the modern world, I think I don't think we do enough of it. If, if, if you are on the innovative team and work with me, I'm still the person who will call you on Teams if your dot is green, because I have a question for you and I don't want to do it through chat or extended email conversation. There's a great opportunity to sit down, have a face-to-face, -face, ask a question, answer a question, and go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, it's very powerful. We talked about time zones. Let's talk about one of the most important things when you go somewhere, um, and that is, how, what, are, what are your options going to be in terms of, of food? So I'll just cover kind of what is included, and then uh, Jeff has done some research on your behalf to kind of give you a sense of what else is available in the area. And then we're very fortunate um, to have uh, Derek, who is local uh, to the area who, in chat who can also chime in with and help answer questions. But in terms of what is included, the conference will include breaks with a light stacks Monday through Wednesday. Uh, Innovative is going to be having a reception uh, Monday evening. And there was some feedback about uh, how the drink ticketing system worked uh, with the reception last year. And I know Innovative is, has taken that and is uh, planning to adjust accordingly uh, when it comes to what is offered from them on that uh, evening reception. Uh, that will be, uh, Tom already mentioned that the Hackathon Happy Hour will be another option for you as well Monday. The all-conference lunch is included with your price uh, on Tuesday. We have the, the breakfast uh, that Innovative is covering for academic libraries. Um, that's on Tuesday as well, right, Tom? That was the day we talked about on that, uh, Tuesday. So, and then an optional add-on for you is the public library lunch, if you, you'd like to attend that on Wednesday. Usually there's some light programming associated with that, but it's primarily just an opportunity for you to kind of network with, with colleagues over that time period and not have to think about where am I going to go out and, and find uh, lunch options. So those days that you do have lunch on your own, so an example of that would be Monday. Um, Monday would be a lunch on your own. The hotel does have a restaurant uh, in the hotel, but in our experience when the steering committee there, I think, Jeff, we agreed the food quality was great, but some of the times the timing was a little slow there. Um, so totally. you, may, you may want to even though it may seem like the best and fastest and easiest option, it may not always get you in and out of there as quickly as some of these other options. I think Jeff, that you've got listed um, here yeah, that so, are available for folks. Yeah. So the first, uh, as Wes mentioned, is the hotel restaurant called Fuel. Um, good food. I recommend the spare rib grilled cheese sandwich. Um, if you uh, like grilled cheese and eat meat, uh, really good. Uh, but it can be slow. It's not a huge restaurant. And so with all of the people in the Rinsen and in the conference, um, it may be hard to even find a, a, a place to sit, um, let alone the food does sometimes take time to get out to you. Um, the Rinsen in, a, in and of itself actually has a lot of restaurants. And these are just ones I picked out that um, uh, kind of casual dining, uh, quick hits that that are available for you to go to on different levels. Um, so you do have the Panera Bread, Pop Belly, Subway, Burger King, the Mexican Grill, Salsaritas. Um, that's a chain if you have one in your area. Uh, there's a uh, Giro Land and um, a couple of others that are kind of casual dining. Um, some quick hits, if you just want to pick up a sandwich, there's the Modi, Motor City, City Pantry, which is right across from Fuel. Um, at, on the opposite side of the uh, registration desk in the hotel. Um, and then there's a couple of options, the Birmingham Deli and then some uh, Starbucks that will have, you know, what they carry, the same little sandwiches and stuff that, that you can get pretty quickly. Um, it is, again, you know, it's our conference is not just what's gonna be at the Renson. So um, people come from around uh, who work locally, who, you know, whatever else is going on in the Renson, um, so uh, you just want to prepare accordingly, even even at the casual dining um, places and the quick hits uh, as well. You, we, sh we should have 90 minutes for lunch. So 
Um, you should have plenty of time to hit one of these places um, and get back to the next sessions, but you just want to make sure that you do plan accordingly. If you want to walk some places, if you go to the next slide, there are a few um, quick hit places that you can go to that are just right across the main intersection there from the front of the Rensen. Um, there's the Bangkok Crossing, which is a Thai restaurant, which gets really good reviews. There's the Ho-Hum Applebee's, but it is just a four minute walk. Um, it's nothing special. I mean, it's not that it's bad food, but it's, you know, nothing specific to uh, Detroit. Uh, Nathan's Deli, which um, Derek says is pretty good, about an eight minute walk, something that would be, uh, you know, quick to go and eat and then make your way back. And then there's the big salad sandwich, uh, salad and sandwich and soup shop, which is about a 10 minute walk. If you want to walk a little bit further, um, there are, I didn't put Nikki's pizza. That is a Detroit style pizza. I meant to add that, um, that is closer to get to, um, there's some chat about buddies. That's Derek's uh, favorite spot for this Detroit style pizza. Um, if you, have special crust needs if you're craving pizza pizza cat actually has vegan um keto uh, uh gluten-free couldn't think of the word uh pizza crust so it's kind of a looks like a fun little place to go and eat it's about a 10 minute walk and if you want to walk all the way up to greek town or you can take the um people mover there's the Red Smoke Barbecue and then Pegasus, as we mentioned um, earlier, which is a, a Greek restaurant, which is really, 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 yeah. really good. I mean, I, yeah. I plan on eating there probably, you know, once or twice while I'm there. It's it's that delicious. Yeah. So um, these are ideas for lunch. If you look at the map, there are other places that are nearby that you can take the people mover to. With 90 minutes, you should be able to get there and back. Uh, but you just want to make sure um, that you can do that. Again, a lot of places deliver. So there's those options as well um, that you can take advantage of. They they will deliver to the rinse in. Um, and if you're looking for a place to go and walk and have a pastry and some coffee, there's the Astoria uh, Bakery, which is also over on Monroe in Greektown, which has like you know 50 foot long mm -hmm. um counter uh a cabinet display i should say of pastries that they make in-house that i wish i could eat all of them so yeah it's pretty yummy uh as wes mentioned derek is um on chairing the local arrangements committee and he will have more options as we get closer for other uh, dinner dining and uh, other things to do and see as well so and Tom, did you have some have had some experience in the area too? Well, I was just noting that Jeff doesn't seem to be Applebee's on a date night with your Bourbon <laughs> Street steak and your Oreo shake. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, the good news I have is at the all conference res dessert reception, uh, the little issue we had last year with one drink ticket is be per person is being resolved. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I appreciate that. Um, know that. Uh, very, very nice. Um, in terms of stuff to do uh, in the area, we'll just go through a few uh, quick options here. One, the, the Detroit uh, Public Library main branch is uh, accessible. Um, and they, if they currently don't have all of the floors available right now. Their, their elevator is having some issues, but that might be resolved by the time that we're there. Some incredible murals. Um, very uh, interesting building, so worth worth a, th uh, a thought if you're, of course, you're all library people, so a great, great potential option. Kind of up in that same area, the, the Detroit Institute of the Arts, um, which is up near in that area, it's closed on Mondays, but if you arrive on Sunday, you might look at your time. Has some great uh, ones from, from the masters uh, and then uh, some the more modern and current masters uh, that are out there on display. So you might consider heading up and looking at up there as well. Kind of somewhat nearby, uh, maybe a little bit extended walking distance, but I would say still feasible, particularly if the weather is good. There's a very cool building called the, the Guardian, which is kind of a, a municipal building now and there's a bank in there but there are also a few little shops in there and this is a photo from 
Um, my wife and I, when we visited there, so very cool looking building if you're into architecture uh, to take a look at. And then it has some lunch and um, coffee uh, spots in there as well. It wasn't particularly uh, busy uh, when uh, my wife and I were there either. So maybe may easy to get in and out of as an option too. Very interesting building. You can get into it from multiple entrances. So don't be concerned if you look at it and think, oh, this looks like it's a secure building. They do have um, personnel there, but they're again, very friendly. The bunch that we encountered, every everybody that we encountered in Detroit was, and are glad to kind of share their enthusiasm about the building and the spot. Uh, so feel free to chat with folks that you see there. Right, kind of depends on how you want to say the front of the building or the facility is, but right out from the Rinsen area is the uh, River Walk, which also within 10 minutes goes to the, it goes to a state park. And, you know, state parks uh, or parks during the winter time might not seem like the most appealing thing, but there can also, there can be a, little, a lot of visual interest or just if you need a place to, to decompress, if you're maybe uh, somebody that, uh, might be a neurodivergent that is overstimulated by all that's going on, a nice option to get out and decompress that is real, cl real close by as well, very easy to, to walk over to. Um, so a good option there as well. I don't think, yeah, Plus, so I, yeah, sure, Jeff. Um, if you're a sports fan, um, I just wanted, like me who tries to go to a sporting event um, when they're out at a conference when if there's time the red wings are not in town and the only other option is the pistons and they do have a game the, the sunday night but and i'm sure tickets are readily available for the pistons uh, who aren't having a very good season if you want to do that but anyway just wanted to throw that in there yeah didn't i see a casino outside my window when we were there for the walk <laughs> yes for, yeah the <laughs> Canada's on the other side, so you'll you'll need your passport, but it's right across the river. Well, there's yeah. also a casino just up the the road from the hotel on the U.S. side. Aha! Uh -huh. so, I forget the name of it, but if um, you want to go and yeah. gamble, you know, yeah. So we're kind of nearing the end of our time here, but I wanted to let you know of a few other innovative uh, events that are coming up. Uh, so if you are a member of IUG, which we hope you all are, uh, next month there will be the opportunity to participate in these uh, no-cost uh, Zoom forums. So they are, uh, there's one at, um, we do in the third Thursday, so it's at 1 p.m. Eastern. They will be about if you're a new Polaris administrator or if you just need to brush up on some things or have a specific question you want to ask about that, that'll be available. At 3 p.m., there will be a similar session for the Sierra folks. Um, these, we kind of have changed the schedule this year. We used to rotate the times between Sierra and Polaris specific ones. Um, we've now kind of settled on 1 p.m. is the Polaris and 3 p.m. are the Sierra ones. We'll uh, welcome your feedback on that if you want to give us more, but we kind of heard that it made more sense to kind of make those, the timing more consistent on that. So we've done that based on your feedback. And then soon, um, probably sometime in March, the member exclusive enhancements process voting uh, that we talked about in December and in uh, January, we expect the voting to open for members in sometime in March. We appreciate the folks that have been um, working uh, on those working groups, the people that submitted to participate in those and those working groups, particularly for Sierra and Polaris, have a really tight schedule. And we appreciate that those folks have just uh, jumped right in with that, have had meetings that they've got set up and have really been uh, going to work right away on everything that's involved with that. And we also thank them because we know it's the first time for this particular process for uh, both IUG and Innovative. So we appreciate them being experimental uh, as well. Uh, that's all we have that we wanted to absolutely make sure that we covered with you. But if there are other questions that you might have, we've got a couple of uh, more minutes left. Um, I've seen, I'm seeing in the chat some more uh, elements about uh, recommendations for museums and things like that. So uh, appreciate uh, Derek answering those types of questions and know that the local arrangements folks will be also planning more, um, getting more information to you as well. Um, 
the scholar the scholarship recipient question i'll have to check on that um our our past chair trevor is uh by the way our system is set up is responsible for that jeff i don't know um if i don't think he has it. announced it yet okay we'll check on that process for you though and we will uh let you know where where we're at with all that the session descriptions will be available on that uh, sketch website the iug 2024 is that we expect to have that within the next two weeks. We have those descriptions. It's just, we wanted to wait till the sketch site was available, which um, got started this past week so that we wouldn't have to enter things in multiple times. So um, you will see those session descriptions listed there for you. Um, so you can review those in detail within the next two weeks. Uh, uh, Big thank you again uh, from me personally to uh, both Tom and all of the folks at Innovative. Um, Tom and Lisa have been the ones that we've been working with regularly on this. So a big thank you for me to all them. Derek has been unbelievably incredible on the local arrangement stuff. Somebody, the kind of perfect person that you want on local arrangements. Uh, somebody that's been in the community for a long time, but is also still very passionate about sharing that community with, uh, with others. Uh, Jeff's been working with all of our um, presenters and we're very excited and very appreciative of all of the presentations that will be available for you to take a look at. Um, yes, yeah, so so my, my thanks to all of them and obviously to all of you that will be attending. It would be, wouldn't be much of a conference without the folks that will be attending. So we're looking forward to seeing all of you there as well. Um, all right. Well, I think it... Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions that, uh, other than the scholarship one. And we, again, we'll get back with you on scholarships and then look for the descriptions, program descriptions on that sketch website. So thank you all again for your time today. I appreciate you all. Hope you have a wonderful rest of oh, yes, it. Yes. I asked Trevor directly and he has not yet um, okay. sent any announcements yet. Okay. I will let you know about the recording. We'll see if it comes together or not, the person who's asking about that. So give us some, some time uh, to look at that and uh, we'll see if we can get that posted and if that kind of came, came together in a way that would be helpful for folks. So we'll let you know there soon. Uh, the question, so folks that need to leave, that's great. Um, the question about a bit regist waiting to register, you could go either way uh, on that. Um, we can refund if you register and you weren't selected for a scholarship, but if you want to wait another week or so, um, week or two, there's no harm in that. Just trying to meet that date of the 15th so that you can get in before that early bird pricing changes. So Either, either way will work if you're feeling anxious about it and want to go ahead and get registered. That's absolutely fine. Um, but if you want to wait and see if you get notification on that, we're, we're hoping we will have that soon. All right. Wonderful. Thank you all again. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. We're looking forward to seeing you all in uh, Detroit. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.